Welcome to Double Deuces. That is episode 22 of the Dealers Compressed podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and I will be your host today as we talk about reputation. And the song you hear is a classic by Joan Jett, who doesn't apparently give a damn about her reputation. I mean, I've never heard a band get so much mileage out of one chord, and they're making it work. It's working. So today we're talking about reputation digital online reputation and let's face it everyone has some sort or just about everyone has some sort of digital presence and therefore you have some level of digital reputation or not even digital reputation personally and as a business we need to think about reputation we need to think about the effects of having a good one a bad one and we're going to talk a little bit about that today and i want to start off by talking about the truth you can't handle the truth the truth is something that i value very highly when we talk about clarity clarity can only really exist in the light of truth and so it gets really convoluted when it comes to reputation because what is the truth when it comes to reputation so the question what is the truth comes up and the answer is we don't really know and when it comes to making decisions based on reputations you don't really know so what are we to do about reputation? I'll say this, from a personal standpoint, be the truth. Be the truth about who you are, which means be authentic. That's a struggle. I gotta say, that's a struggle for me because we want people to like us. You like me right now. We want people to be happy with us, at least I can speak. I want people to like me. I don't know, is that common? Is it uncommon? It's just me, I'm trying to be honest. So start by being authentic, have integrity, and then the next thing is being consistent in that integrity. So consistency is basically being predictable in your integrity so that when a situation comes upon me, you already kind of know how I'm going to respond because you know me. That, in my opinion, is what integrity is. So apply across the board. So we're going to start there, start with talking about reputation and integrity and being the same person. And now we're going to segue into what does that mean for us who have to execute in this digital world, whether it's brand building, whether it's building an organization, whether it's building a personal brand, promoting a not-for-profit or something that we truly believe in? What does that mean? Today we hear personal brand, organizational brand, brand management, branding, employment brand, right? Brand, brand, brand. And brand is just the word we use now to talk about reputation. It's the same thing. Brand is how it makes them feel. Do I feel trusting? Do I feel anxious? Do I feel aggressive? Do I feel calm? When you develop your brand in the way you want to, people are going to feel what it is that you desire them to feel because you've done a good job of communicating your brand. So from an organizational standpoint, from a brand building standpoint, we're going to talk about some practical things today that we need to pay attention to. I'm going to start off with some statistics. First one, 84% of buyers trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation. Let that sink in for a second. That means 84% of people will read an online review and they're going to trust it the same as if their friend said it to them. That's a lot of trust in a stranger's opinion of you. Whether or not it's the truth is irrelevant in that moment. They're making buying decisions based on that person's opinion, which may not even be founded in the truth. When I read that, I read vulnerable. Next statistic, 78% of searches start on Google and business listings. What do they have next to them? They have a review. So if most searches start on Google and Google's displaying a review. And if someone sees that review, 84% of them are going to make a buying decision based on that review as if a friend said it to them. Vulnerable. Third stat, if there are one to three negative reviews, that's going to deter 67% of shoppers from buying a product or service from you. What this means is that organizations, car dealers, individuals, salespeople, people that work at your dealership, it all works together as a brand representation. So what are we to do? Well, we have to get proactive. Um, I really think proactivity starts with you. So the you who is ever listening to this or watching this, it starts with you and it starts right now. We're going to tie this in. What generates a review? What what causes somebody to say, yes, I will, I will write a review? More specifically, it's generated from a customer's experience. So we talk a lot about customer experience in the industry and retail in general. A review is generated by a customer experience 
And what do you think happens if they have a bad experience? Are they more or less likely to talk about it and review you online? A lot more likely. If they have a great experience, how likely are they to take the time to find a review site or find, you know, how much effort are they willing to put in to give you a good review? A whole lot less than if they had a bad experience. You know that people that have a bad experience are going to review you without you giving them any prompting. They're going to be enthusiastic about reviewing a negative experience. So number one, you need to respond to those comments publicly, quickly, empathetically, and you need to get it fixed. Active. The second and Probably the harder part is to encourage people that had a good experience, give them an easy path to leave you a good review. Because as the balance starts to shift from good reviews to bad reviews, you might have a thousand happy customers. Out of that thousand, maybe 10 of them left a good review. You might have a hundred unhappy customers or even a customer with had maybe a little issue that was easily resolved and 50 of them might have left a review half of them so now you have 10 good reviews to 50 bad reviews and the truth of the situation is you have a thousand happy customers and only a few that had an unresolvable issue. If you're not paying attention to this, you need to be because absolutely it is hurting you. And I wanna segue here a second to talk about your team. And I want every CFO who might be listening, um, general managers will be interested, owners, but CFO specifically, I want you to lean in a little bit, okay? Because this affects the bottom line in a way that you currently aren't even measuring. So we hear people talk about employment brand and company culture and we'll take that back to think reputation what is your reputation as an employer and this directly affects the customer experience because it directly affects how the people on your team treat your customers and also what type of talent you can bring into the fold so did you know that nine out of ten millennials would take a pay cfos lean in take a pay cut for a company that had a better culture yes and also, there are lots of studies that point to the fact that a better company culture, big surprise here, increases your retention rate. We know in the auto industry we're historically bad at this, and reputation has a lot to do with it as an industry. Reputation has something to do with it on a local level, and the good news is that you as the dealer, as the general manager, as the leaders of the company, even as the team, and the employees have control over your reputation. It's starting starts with actually caring and showing everyone that you care, but that isn't enough because lots of people care and still have a bad reputation. Remember, we're fighting back the stigma of salespeople. We're fighting back the stigma of car salespeople, which isn't so great. And we have to fight back from those things. And we're fighting back the stigma of like commission-based business, long hours. And we know the reality is in a lot of cases, that's not how it is anymore. And dealers have done a really good job starting to pivot in the right direction. So a strong employment brand, a strong employment reputation means that you retain great people, attract great people, and these great people Big surprise coming, they treat your customers better, they're excited to be there, and then the customer, big surprise coming, has a better experience, and the experience is what generates the review, which is what generates the positive reputation. So that is kind of, maybe that's even more important than a lot of the other stuff is focusing on that first. You get to decide because you know where you are as a dealer, as an organization, as a company, and I'm not trying to tell you where to start, I'm just trying to say these are the things that are important to pay attention to so you can pick one and start swinging the ax. So all that to say, pay attention to reputation. Brand and reputation is important. You can't communicate a great brand unless you first articulate what your brand is. You can't uphold a certain reputation unless you first in make the time investment, the financial investment in defining, unless you make the time investment and the financial investment in defining what you want your reputation to be, what you want your brand to be about. Only after you do that can you actually move toward it and once you can move toward it, you can start to pay attention to our customers getting the truth about what you want your reputation to be and are they communicating that. So Joan Jett, what does she think about her reputation? She doesn't care. I have a feeling you care a lot more. I care a lot more. I think as a group of industry professionals, as people who want to be better, as people who want a good reputation, by all definitions, we can be better. I hope this podcast helps get you off the couch or get you uh, to change your thinking a little bit so we can take a step forward in that. My name is Paul J. Daly. Thank you for listening. I value your attention. If there's anything we can do to help you move the ball forward, please let me know. Follow the links. Send me an email. I would love to help. Thank you. Have a great week. I